Welcome to our channel Learning Math. In this video, we're going to learn about trigonometric functions. Before starting by trigonometric functions, let's learn first what's the meaning of functions. If we have, for example, a straight line d of equation y equals 3x minus 1. Here we can say that y is a function in terms of x and y. X and Y are variables. However, X varies, Y will vary. If we take, for example, as you see here, for X equals minus 1. Note that 3 times X is 3 times minus 1. It gives us minus 3. Minus 1, it gives us minus 4. So Y will be minus 4. Also, if x equals 0, y will be minus 1. If x 2, y will be 5. So, however x varies, y will vary. Here we say that y is a function in terms of x. Another example, if we have a polynomial p of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 2. Also, however x varies, p of x will vary. So, here we can say that p of x is also a function in terms of x. Well, what's the meaning of trigonometric functions? Trigonometric functions are the functions that give us the relation between the angles and the sides of right triangles. First of all, to uh, understand well the rules and apply them correctly in any right triangle, we should specify something which is very important in this right triangle. First of all, the side that faces the right angle is said to be the hypotenuse. If we have, for example, an angle alpha in this triangle, the side that faces this angle is said to be the opposite to this angle. Then the third side in this triangle will be the adjacent side to this angle. Now the first trigonometric rule is said to be sine alpha. Actually, sine alpha is equal opposite over hypotenuse. So here we can say that sine alpha is the opposite, which is AC, over the hypotenuse, which is B, C. So it's equal AC over BC. Actually, sine alpha is less than or equal 1. Note that something which is very important, the longest side in any right triangle is its hypotenuse. So AC is less than BC. We can say that AC over BC is less than 1. The second trigonometric rule, which is very important, is said to be cosine alpha. Cosine alpha is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, here was the adjacent to this angle, isn't it the side AB? So we can say that it's AB over the hypotenuse, which is BC. Also sure, AB is less than BC. Also cosine alpha is less than or equal 1. Well, the third trigonometric rule before moving to an application on them is said to be tangent alpha. Actually, tangent alpha is equal to sine alpha over cosine alpha. We can replace sine alpha by opposite over hypotenuse and cosine alpha by adjacent over hypotenuse. Note that here we are dividing fractions. We can copy the first fraction, transform, divide it into times, and then reverse the second fraction. It will be hypotenuse over adjacent. Note that can't we simplify hypotenuse by hypotenuse? Then what remains for us opposite over adjacent, which is here AC over A. B. So we can say that tangent alpha, we can write it by two rules which are very important. Tangent alpha is equal to sine alpha over cosine alpha and it's also equal to opposite over adjacent. Now let's start by the first application on these rules. If we have for example a triangle ABC of sides BC equal 5, AC 4 and AB is 3. Before solving and calculating any trigonometric function, we should specify the hypotenuse which faces the right angle, the opposite to the angle alpha which is here the side AC and the third side that will be directly the adjacent. Well, sine alpha isn't it opposite over hypotenuse? So we can say that sine alpha is equal to AC over BC is equal here 4 over 5 equal to 0 0.8. Now, what about cosine alpha? Isn't it adjacent over hypotenuse? So here was the adjacent is the side AB over the hypotenuse, which is here the side BC. So it's a 3 over 5 equals 0 0.6. Note that it's also less than or equal 1. Well, what about tangent alpha? Tangent alpha, we can write it as sine alpha over cosine alpha, or we can say it's opposite over 
adjacent. If we say it's opposite over adjacent, then 4 over 3. Also, if we say it sine alpha over cosine alpha 0 0.8 over 0 0.6 gives us the same answer after simplifying, which is 4 over 3. So both the rules are correct. We can use any one of them. However, it's possible. Now we're going to learn a rule which is very important uh, in trigonometric functions. Before learning this rule, we should keep in mind something which is very important. In right triangles, we don't uh, only have a trigonometric functions to apply, we can also have Pythagoras theorem. We shouldn't forget it. By Pythagoras theorem, we can say that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the sides squared. So here we can say that BC squared is equal to AB squared plus AC squared. Now let's uh, learn together a rule which is very important about trigonometric functions. What's the relation between sine alpha and cosine alpha? If we have sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha, let's solve it together. Sine alpha isn't it opposite over hypotenuse, so it's AC over BC. But since we have sine square alpha, so we write AC over BC or squared plus what about cosine square alpha? Cosine alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's AB over BC. Since we have cosine square alpha, so we write AB over BC all squared. Sure, in divided by, we can distribute the power, so here we can write it as AC square over BC square plus AB square over BC square. Note that uh, we are adding fractions that have the same denominator, bc squared. So we can directly add the numerators, ac squared plus ab squared. But by Pythagoras theorem, isn't ac squared plus ab squared equal to bc squared? So we can replace ac squared plus ab squared by bc squared. We copy the denominator the same. Note that here we get bc squared over bc squared. We can simplify them. Isn't it equal to 1? So we can learn a rule which is very important. We have sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha is always equal to 1, whatever was the value of this angle alpha. Now let's start by some applications on these rules. Here, the first example, we should prove that cosine, uh, cosine 4 uh, x, sorry, instead of alpha, here we have x. Cosine 4 x minus sine 4 x we should prove it equal to cosine x minus sine x into cosine x plus sine x. Not something which is very important. If we say cosine 4x, isn't it cosine square x all squared? Here 2 times 2 is 4. Also, sine uh, to the power 4x, we can write it as sine square x all squared. Now, isn't it in the form of a square minus b squared what well, we can write it as a minus b into a plus b here we just remove the squared outside the squares outside what's the value of a cosine square x and what's the value of b sine square x we replace them a minus b a plus b what well, not something which is very important cosine square x plus sine square x we have just learned is equal to one now, what about cosine square x minus sine square x? Again, can't we apply it's a remarkable identity? a square minus b square. Can't we write it as a minus b into a plus b? So, it's here cosine x minus sine x into cosine x plus sine x. All multiplied by 1, so they remain the same. So, here we have proved that cosine 4x minus sine 4x is equal to cosine x minus sine x into cosine x plus sine x. Now, let's prove that sine square alpha over 1 minus cosine alpha minus cosine alpha equal 1. We have, as you see here, sine square alpha. Can't we apply any rule on it? Note that sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha equals 1. Can't we say then that uh, sine square alpha equals 1 minus cosine square alpha? So here we can replace sine square alpha by 1 minus cosine square alpha. As you see, isn't it as 1 square minus cosine square alpha? As a square minus b square. So it's a 
minus b into a plus b. We can write it as 1 minus cosine alpha into 1 plus cosine alpha. Also, as you see, we copy the rest the same. Now, can't we simplify 1 minus cosine alpha by 1 minus cosine alpha? What remains for us? 1 plus cosine alpha. So here, sure to simplify, also whenever we have any fraction, we should have the denominator different from 0. 1 minus cosine alpha is different from 0. Here, cosine alpha is different from 1. Well, now we can simplify, as you see, 1 minus cosine alpha by 1 minus cosine alpha, we simplify it. What remains for us? 1 plus cosine alpha, we copy it. Minus cosine alpha, we also copy it. Not here, plus cosine alpha minus cosine alpha, isn't it cancelled? What remains for us? 1, so it's equal to 1. Now let's prove that 1 plus 10 square alpha equals 1 over cosine square alpha. Note that tangent alpha isn't it sine alpha over cosine alpha? We can replace tangent alpha by sine alpha over cosine alpha. But here, as you see, we have it squared. So we should uh, write them squared. So it's sine square alpha over cosine square alpha. But why did we write here times cosine square alpha? We are adding one with a fraction. We should transform into the same denominator. We can write one as one over one. Here, since the denominator is cosine alpha, we can multiply one by cosine square alpha to get the same denominator. Now, as we multiply the denominator, we should multiply the numerator by cosine square alpha. Well, one times cosine square alpha is cosine square alpha over, sure, one times cosine square alpha is also cosine square alpha. As you see, we got two fractions of the same denominator, which is cosine square alpha. Now we just add the numerators, cosine square alpha plus sine square alpha. You know when we add them, we get 1. Since we have a rule, sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha equals 1. It doesn't affect if we write one before the other, as you see here, cosine square plus sine square. It's the same. Now let's prove that. Tangent square alpha over 1 plus tan square alpha equals sine square alpha. By the same method, we can just replace tangent alpha by sine alpha over cosine alpha. So here we can have sine square alpha over cosine square alpha. Also on the denominator, we can have instead of tan square alpha, sine square alpha over cosine square alpha. We just raise them square since we have here tangent square. What? Note that here we can distribute the power since we have divided by sine square alpha over cosine square alpha here the same. Also we transform into the same denominator. We have 1 plus sine square alpha over cosine square alpha. We can write 1 as 1 over 1 and transform them into the same denominator. So here we can have sine square alpha over cosine square alpha. Divided by here 1 times cosine square alpha is cosine square alpha over 1 times cosine square alpha is cosine square alpha. We got the same denominator. Now we can add the numerators cosine square alpha plus sine square alpha. It gives us 1. Uh, you know that the rule sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha is 1. So we replace cosine square alpha plus cosine square alpha by 1. As you see here, we are dividing now two fractions with each other. We copy the first fraction the same, sine square alpha over cosine square alpha. Divided becomes times and we reverse the second fraction, 1 over cosine square alpha. It becomes cosine square alpha over 1. As you see here, we can simplify cosine square alpha by cosine square alpha. Now what remains for us? Sine square alpha over 1, which is sine square alpha. Another example now show that sine x minus cosine x squared plus sine x plus cosine x all squared is equal to. Well, as you see here, we have two remarkable identities. The first one is in the form of a minus b all squared, and the second is in the form of a plus b all squared. Here a is sine x and b is cosine x. Now we just replace them by their values. So we can say that here it's sine square x minus 2 sine x cosine x, which is 2ab, plus b square, which is cosine square x. We apply the rule on the first one, plus we copy it. Now here, as you see, we have a plus b all square. We write it as 
a square plus 2ab plus b square also a is sine x and b is cosine x we just write them by their values now we can uh, solve as you see here sine square x plus cosine square x is 1 minus 2 sine x cosine x we copy it the same plus here also in the second uh, term we have sine square x plus cosine square x we can write it as 1 it's a rule plus 2 sine x cosine x we copy it the same now we remove parentheses here we have nothing in front of them we can copy it the same 1 minus 2 sine x cosine x plus we copy it the same here since we have plus we can copy the second one the same and remove parentheses so it's 1 plus 2 sine x cosine x now if you note something minus 2 sine x cosine x plus 2 sine x cosine x isn't it cancelled what remains for us 1 plus 1 so it's equal to another example now show that sine x plus cosine x squared minus sine x minus cosine x all squared is equal for sine x cosine x also here we have two remarkable identities as you see we have the first one a plus b all squared the second one a minus b all squared we apply the rule on each side and keep copying minus the same here it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared minus we copy it here it's a squared minus 2ab plus b squared the most important thing is to keep on parentheses here since we have minus now also sine square x plus cosine square x is 1 plus 2 sine x cosine x we copy it the same also here uh, sine square x plus cosine square x is 1 and minus 2 sine x cosine x we copy it the same now we can remove the first parentheses and copy them the same since we have nothing in front of them so it's 1 plus 2 sine x cosine x here we should reverse the signs or multiply by minus minus signs plus is minus 1 we copy it now minus signs minus plus 2 sine x cosine x we copy it the same note something 1 minus 1 is cancelled what 2 sine x cosine x plus 2 sine x cosine x 2 plus 2 is 4 sine x cosine x we copy them the same so it's equal for sine x cosine x finally the last example shows that 1 plus cosine x over sine x is equal to sine x over 1 minus cosine x what uh, neither sine x we can replace it nor cosine x but if you know something to get the denominator 1 minus cosine x we can here multiply both of them by 1 minus cosine x let's see what will happen if you know something here 1 plus cosine x 1 minus cosine x isn't it as a plus b into a minus b so it gives us a square minus b square so it's 1 square minus cosine square x 1 square sure is 1 minus cosine square x we copy it the same now here sine x into 1 minus cosine x we also copy it the same but we shouldn't forget the rule that sine square x plus cosine square x is 1 well if we move cosine square x to the other side isn't sine square x equal 1 plus cosine square x becomes minus cosine square x so we can replace 1 minus cosine square x by sine square x now can't we simplify sine square x by sine x what remains for us here sine x so it's equal to sine x over 1 minus cosine x thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe for the continuity of our channel to support you by more and more information with a great appreciation for your support